Now, you know, earlier this morning, I was watching Warren Buffett on, on CNBC. And again, you know, he really annoys me, uh, particularly when he's talking about how people have to pay higher taxes. And he's upset about the fact that he's paying such a small amount of taxes. You know, when, when Joe Curtin asked him, well, what's stopping you from making a donation? He basically said, well, other people aren't doing it because he mentioned how little people are donating. And so I guess he didn't want to donate it if nobody else was. But I guess he would donate. He would do it if he was forced to. I mean, he's such a hypocrite. He, he claims that he's only paying 15 percent in taxes because all of his income is in dividends. He chooses as the head of, uh, of chairman of uh, Berkshire Hathaway to pay himself zero in salary. That's why all of his income is dividends, because he chose to work for free. But. How much is Warren Buffett really paying? He's not paying 15 percent because as the largest shareholder of Berkshire, he is paying uh, taxes through Berkshire Hathaway because the dividends that he was getting from Berkshire is getting would be much bigger if Berkshire wasn't paying any federal income taxes. The fact is, if Berkshire is paying 35 percent in corporate income tax, that counts as Berkshire as as Warren Buffett paying 35 percent. So he's not paying 15 percent. When you take the 35 percent he's paying at the corporate level and the 15 percent he's paying at the personal level, he's paying much closer to 50 percent of his income in taxes. Yet he doesn't want to admit it. He wants to pretend that his secretary is paying a higher rate than he is. He's full of it. He's full of it. And also, you know, when he's talking about the fact that taxes are too low and this big thing, I mentioned it yesterday. The liberals are all over this bogus statistic that taxes are too low because they represent only 16 percent of GDP. And that's the lowest in 60 years. So the rich are getting away for with murder. People are paying the lowest taxes in 60 years. That is complete, unadulterated nonsense. I mean, first of all, comparing the tax rate to the GDP doesn't make any sense, especially since the GDP is so inflated up. It's like if the government tinkered around with the GDP numbers, which they've done many, many times over the last 40 or 50 years, to get the GDP to be bigger than it otherwise would have been. So if they can tinker with the numbers again and generate some kind of phony 10% increase in GDP, does that mean they can claim that everybody's got a tax cut? Because now the taxes that we're paying represent a smaller fraction of this phony GDP and then use that to justify increasing taxes. Well, you know, the bottom line is the numbers don't lie. The numbers speak for themselves. So what I did is I wanted to find out, you know, what the taxes are like today for the so-called rich versus what they were in 1950. So what I did is I assumed a couple making $250,000, right? Because that's the cutoff, right? If you make it $250,000, we need to really raise your taxes because you're not paying enough. So I wanted to take that $250,000 threshold and say, okay, what is a typical family that earns $250,000 paying in income taxes today in federal taxes? And I'm including the payroll tax. So the payroll tax, Social Security and Medicare and income, that's their federal tax burden. What percentage of their income is that? And then I took a similar income in 1950 and pulled out the 1950 tax code to see what the person would make back then. Now, of course, $250,000 today, you know, I'm not going to look at a $250,000 income in 1950 because, you know, that, that's much bigger. So the actual, the, the inflation adjusted equivalent is approximately 25000 I mean, maybe 26, 27, but just call it 25000 because it's just an, it, it works better, but it's very close. So $250,000 today gives you the same purchasing power as $25,000 did in 1950. And, you know, it really shows you, too, how much value the dollar has lost between 1950 and today, that somebody has to make 10 times the money that someone made in, in, in 1950 to, to, have the, um, to have the same income. So here's what I did. I took a $250,000 family, and I figured that today the average household that's making 250000 has probably got two spouses in the workforce. It's probably not one guy making two fifty. It's probably a husband and a wife combined making two fifty. That's just you know mo- how how the modern world is. So I didn't want to be cute. I just split the money. I just split it down the middle and assumed the wife makes one twenty five and the husband makes one twenty five. So I took that and I said, okay, well, what is that person going to pay in taxes? Assuming the couple takes the standard deduction. Now the reason I want to do the standard deduction, obviously a lot of couples, they're going to have mortgage interest, they're going to have dependents, so they're not going to necessarily take the standard deduction, so they would pay a lower tax than what I'm going to look at. But the same would be true in 1950. So I put the standard deduction in 1950 as well, and surely, you know, in fact, the 1950 tax code was far more liberal 
Uh, so somebody with a twenty-five thousand dollars taxable income in nineteen fifty probably had you know gross income much much higher than that. I mean, it was a more, much more generous tax code. A lot more things were deductible. Uh, there are all kinds of shelter potentials that existed in nineteen fifty that do not exist today. Uh, they you know so. I think that if we the, the actual numbers would even be a greater uh, in favor of lower taxes in 1950 than today. But I'm just assuming that everybody takes a standard deduction and that no one took advantage of any of the loopholes in the code, of which there were far more in 1950 than there are today. So first I looked at what they would pay in payroll taxes, Social Security, Medicare. And of course, that is a tax on the first 106800 of income. So both couples would max out at 106800 for their Social Security, but of course they have to pay the Medicare tax on all of their income. Now, I didn't just look at the employee's portion. I looked at the employee's portion and the employer's portion. And what I actually did is the total amount of, 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 of payroll taxes, Social Security, Medicare, paid for each, uh, each spouse between the employee and the employer combined was $25,130.20. Half was paid by the employee. Half was paid on the employee's behalf by the employer. But, of course, if the employer didn't have to send that $13,000 to the government for Social Security pages, he would have instead paid it to the employee. Because as far as he's concerned, it doesn't matter if I hire somebody and, I have, and my net cost is $165,000, whether I send $15,000 to the government and $150,000 to the employee or the whole $165,000 to the employee. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter how many people my employee designates me to send money to on his behalf. It all has to come out as his productivity. So the worker pays 100% of it. And, of course, if this guy was making $250,000 and he was self-employed, he would have to pay the self-employment tax, which would be the entire $25,000 on his own. I assumed that he, that he wasn't self-employed, but obviously if both of the people were self-employed earning $250,000, then they would directly each pay the, 20, the $25,000 and change to the IRS for their uh, payroll taxes. And I grabbed up the tax code and I figured out how much they would pay in income taxes, Jen, just assuming the standard deduction. And when I added what the couple paid in income taxes to what they paid in payroll taxes, they paid about they paid almost exactly 40% of their entire income in federal taxes, Social Security, Medicare, and income taxes, earning $250,000, 40% of the total income. And of course, to arrive at their total income, I took the 250000 that they earned, added back in what their employer paid. So I said their real income was over 270000 They just didn't, they didn't see it all. And then from that level is where I subtracted all the taxes. So I figured out their taxes based on the two hundred and seventy whatever thousand dollar income, not the two hundred and fifty. So and even then it ended up as forty percent. Now, I did the same thing uh, for the uh, somebody earning twenty five thousand in nineteen fifty and his total tax, including the employer portion of Social Security, his total tax was less than twenty two percent of his income. Twenty two percent. Now, for nineteen fifty, I assumed there was only one person working. But even if I assume two, the Social Security taxes were so low, it doesn't even make a difference. The total amount that somebody who earned twenty five thousand dollars paid in Social Security taxes, including his employer's portion, was ninety dollars, ninety dollars. I mean, it, Social Security represented less than one and a half percent of the total income when you in, include the employer's portion. Today, Social Security taxes are almost half. It, of the, 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 the couple that I, that I looked at today that's paying all these taxes, they're paying in, in, uh, in federal income tax, they paid about $60,000 in change in, in income taxes. But between the two of them, they paid almost over $50,000 in Social Security and Medicare taxes. But, you know, even if you throw all the Social Security taxes out and, and assume they paid no Social Security tax, what they paid in income tax rec- represented about 24% of their income compared to 21% uh, for the a single earner earning $25,000 in 1950. So even then it's lower. But of course, when you, when you throw in the, the burden of the payroll tax, it's, it's much, much higher. So the person today making $250,000 a year, 
is paying 80% more in federal taxes than his 1950 counterpart making the same inflation-adjusted income. 80% more. And, of course, if you really took into account the deductions that the guys making 250000 are taking today versus the guy who made 25000 in 1950, the numbers would be even more skewed. I bet in reality... The average two hundred and fifty thousand dollar earners today are paying more than a, more than double, more than a hundred percent of the tax rate that their counterparts did in nineteen sixty. And of course, in nineteen sixty, you know, far fewer states had state income taxes. In fact, there were very few states that had state income taxes back then. And the ones that did, the rates were lower than the, what we got now, uh, and so they didn't have to. So they, they they were keeping a lot more. So we're not getting away with murder here. Taxes are not ridiculously low they are as high as they've been now are there some people that are operating hedge funds that are paying lower taxes than people who made that equivalent amount of money in 1950 sure but that's because of a loophole that congress put in the law to favor these these guys that they refuse to close because they get a lot of money uh from the from from wall street so yes there is a small segment of the population that's paying a lower tax but the average guy making 250000 the average household making 250000 300000 350000 they are paying much more in taxes than they would have paid uh, had they been living under the 1950 codes with 1950s equivalent income.